Hey, what's going on? It's Jerry Gleam back on the scene here with another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing y'all the best export settings for FL Studio. So getting these settings correct is gonna ensure that you have the highest quality file for your export. So I'm gonna show y'all the settings that I use, and I'm also gonna give y'all the reason why I use them. So let's hop right in and get to it. So I'm here in FL Studio, and I have a song that's completed and ready to be exported. So I come to the top left of the screen, and I hit File, Export, and you can select any file you want because you can always have control over which file type you export on the export screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and select WAV file and I'm just gonna type FL Studio vid and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. So this is the export screen and this is where you're gonna choose all the settings for your final export. So the first setting to choose from is to export either the full song or just the pattern. And if you were in pattern mode, then you could just export that select pattern. But for this tutorial, we're gonna export the full song. The next setting to choose from is the tail setting. And this is gonna give you control over the very end of the song and how it ends. And so you have three different settings to choose from. And you can see here on this screenshot, there's cut remainder, leave remainder, and wrap remainder. So the first setting, the cut remainder setting, if you select this, then it's gonna take that last piece of audio in your song and it's going to cut it right there as that audio file ends. And the next setting is leave remainder. So leave remainder is going to be useful if you have any type of reverb or delay or echo applied to that last piece of audio. It's going to allow you know that effect to play out. And then the last setting, the wrap remainder setting, is going to take that last piece of audio and loop it around back to the beginning. So this is just useful when you're exporting loops or samples but I don't really use this setting at all. So in situations where you know you basically end the song on like a guitar strum or you played a note on the piano, maybe you were singing a cappella, if you wanted the song to kind of have a smooth ending and you know allow all the effects to eventually play out and decay, then you would hit leave remainder. So if you're still confused about the tail setting, then what you could do is you could come back to the playlist and use this select tool up here at the top of the toolbar and then highlight the whole song. And then here at the end, you can control exactly where you want this export to end at. So I would go ahead and play the end of your song. And then what you could do is find out where exactly you want it to end at and then basically highlight all the way up until that point. So this is completely dependent on what sounds natural to your ear as far as the ending of the song goes. So now when you come back to the export screen, you can see that here under the mode, you have song selection. So it's gonna export whatever you selected with the select tool. So however you wanna go about that is up to you, but underneath those two settings, it shows you right here the length of your song, um, the total time of your song, and then also the file size of your file. Underneath that, you have a couple of different file types to choose from. For me, I only use either the WAV or the MP3 file. So the WAV file is gonna be a larger file size, but it's also gonna be higher quality. It's gonna retain a lot of that definition and information from the project. And it's gonna be closer to what you're actually hearing when you're playing the song inside FL Studio. Anytime that you're gonna be uploading your song to the internet and it's gonna be the final mastered version that people are gonna hear, then you wanna go ahead and select the WAV file type. So the MP3 file is gonna be a lower quality than the WAV file because it's going to compress the actual file so that way the file size is a lot smaller than the WAV file and so you're going to lose a lot of quality. So the only time that I would really export as an mp3 file would be if I was in a situation where I needed a small file size and that would just be like if I was emailing it to myself or I was going to show a friend. But if you do have mp3 selected you want to make sure that this mp3 bitrate is the highest setting possible of 320 kilobytes per second. So we're going to move on as if we were exporting as a WAV file and if you have WAV files selected then the bit depth setting is going to be pretty important and you know back in the day they used 16 bit and this was like when you're exporting for like CDs and a lot of people still export at 16 bit. Um, but now websites are accepting 24 bit files. So I go ahead and export my final master at 24 bit because this is just going to give me a higher quality file. And then you want to make sure that this stereo option is always selected for your final export. So now we're moving on to the quality section and under resampling, you want to select 512 point sync. This is the highest quality that you can export at. And this is also going to make your export time a little longer, but I think it's worth it just because it's gonna give you a higher quality file. 
If you are concerned about export time, then I would just make sure to select anything either 64 point sync and above. So the next setting that you want to make sure is checked is high quality for all plugins. This just makes sure that all the effects that you've applied throughout your mix are going to be at a high quality. Disable maximum polyphony. You want to have this always selected. And this is kind of a complicated subject, but what it really means is that on each channel, you have the ability to select a maximum polyphony setting. And that's just going to save some computer space if you had it selected. And that'll like minimize the amount of like notes or voices that can be played at one time on that instrument. And so people that do have slower computers could select that to kind of free up some computer space and help their computer run a little faster. But when you're exporting, you just want to make sure that you always have this selected. The next option is dithering. And this is also kind of a complicated subject. And you can see that it's grayed out right now. So if I went ahead and selected the MP3 file, then dithering would reappear and allow you to select it. So what dithering is gonna do is it's gonna add a small amount of really quiet, static white noise, for lack of better words, to your song. And it's actually really inaudible to the ear. You won't be able to hear it. But the reason that you do this is that anytime you go from a higher bit depth to a lower bit depth, that conversion could sometimes create some artifacts and so the dithering is going to be there to really help you know mask any of those audible artifacts that you might hear from that bit depth conversion so inside fl studio when you're making beats or mixing you're working with 32-bit flow audio and so when you export to either 24-bit or 16-bit you want to apply dithering just to help mask any of those unwanted artifacts. So obviously dithering is a complicated subject, so I would suggest going to read up on it and that will kind of help you determine when and where you want to use dithering. For me, I always use dithering when I'm exporting an MP3 file and also when I'm exporting a WAV file with a bit depth of 24-bit or 16-bit. So you can see here that dithering is actually grayed out and so anytime you're trying to export a 24-bit depth WAV file, um, FL Studio won't allow you to apply dithering to that and you have to change this to 16-bit for the dithering option to reappear So I'm not really sure why FL Studio allows you to only apply dithering to 16-bit files A lot of limiters actually have their own dither section So here on Ozone 9 you can see that the dither section is here in the bottom right and this will give you a little bit more control over the actual dithering that you're applying to your song if you do end up using the dither section on your limiter then I would just say don't use the dithering option on the FL Studio screen when you're exporting because you don't want to apply dithering twice to the same file. So just to sum it all up, if I'm exporting an MP3 file, then I go ahead and apply dithering. And if I'm exporting a 24-bit or a 16-bit WAV file, then I also apply dithering, but I either do it in the limiter section or I can apply dithering right here to a 16-bit file on the FL Studio export screen. So I know it's confusing. Hopefully you are staying with me, um, but I really want y'all to have the highest quality export. So go ahead and try to do your own research and determine when and where you want to use dithering. So moving on to the last section here at the bottom of the export screen, you want to make sure that enable master effects is selected. This just allows you to have plugins on your master channel and that they're active and applying, you know, whatever effect they are to the master channel. Enable insert effects. This just makes sure that all the effects and plugins that you've applied to your mixer channels, they're enabled. And then the last setting that I always select is trim PDC silence. So PDC stands for Plugin Delay Compensation, and this is just what FL Studio applies to your song to compensate for all the latency that these plugins introduce to the mix. So Plugin Delay Compensation is going to apply a small amount of silence right at the beginning of your song, so when you press play, it's not actually going to play the music right away. So what we want to go ahead and do is make sure this is selected and that's going to remove that small amount of silence. So these other settings I always leave unchecked. Um, split mixer tracks is kind of useful. You could select that if you were going to export, you know, the individual tracks in this song and send them to like a mix engineer. And that would help give them control over each sound in the mix. All of these other settings over here on the bottom left side of the export screen, I never select. Um, they're kind of self-explanatory. So if you want to select those, you can, but I don't think they're very useful. And then finally here at the bottom, it says upload to cloud. And if you select this arrow, it brings up another screen and you can upload straight to like SoundCloud or any other account that you have linked to FL Studio. Me personally, I just want the file to be exported to the file destination. So I never select upload to cloud. So now you can press start and begin your export, or you could go to background rendering and select it. 
And this is going to free up some computer space and allow you to minimize FL Studio and go do other things on your computer. But the export time will take longer if you select this. And you can also select show files when complete. And this will just pop up your file destination once the export is complete. So I'm not gonna select that. I know exactly where I saved it to. I'm just gonna go ahead and press start and begin this export. So if for whatever reason during your export, you want to cancel the export, you could just click abort. So a quick note that I forgot to mention is that you could select wave and MP3 at the same time and you know select your settings for the mp3 and then when you go to export it'll export these at the same time it'll obviously take longer but if you're trying to you know get both of those files then you can just go ahead and do it at one time all right so that's it for today if y'all are still confused about anything just go ahead and leave a comment and i'll get back to you as soon as i can and i'll see y'all in the next video